people always ask how I balance my family life with 400 shows a year. I'm just doing what I love with the people I love. It's my magic life. I like Wes Isley. I like everything about him. All right. So, guys, today we have Chuck Caputo and his amazing assistant slash wife slash cook slash maid slash cook, <laughs> Harry. And uh, this is uh, Chuck's second uh, episode. He's been on the podcast. Last time we were audio only, and he said, man, now that you guys are video, we can do some really cool things. So, guys, if you are only listening to the podcast today, you got to switch over, go to YouTube, go to Red Coral Universe, find us and check out this episode because yeah. it's definitely going to be a visual episode. So, Chuck, welcome back, buddy. How you been? Oh, oh, pretty good. Thanks for having me again. I appreciate it. I think it will be, uh, you know, a lot more detailed with a video type of thing. Nice. Yeah. So that'd be really cool because mm -hmm. I can show you some unique magic props. Mm -hmm. But as far as uh, how we've been, we've been very busy. I've been doing uh, quite a few shows. I mean, basically every day or every other day. And I'll, I'll be 60 in January, so it's getting a little, it's getting a little tiresome. <laughs> but uh, just keep on going. Yeah. Just keep going, please yeah. keep going. Don't, don't yeah. do it. You love it. Yeah, it's you know what? I'll I'll do it as long as I can. And uh, and my I, and my uh, beautiful wife Sherry here, she's a she's a great helper, so that's fantastic. Yeah. And we were mentioning prior to the uh, beginning of the podcast, we had another addition to our family. We have our first grandchild. His uh, name is Roman. He's adorable. And uh, he's really cute. He's five months old, right? That's right, yeah. So it'll be oh, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, we're going to see him tomorrow. We'll be preparing for Thanksgiving we're over. We're going to go over and help and oh, stay yeah. a couple days. And so, yeah, yeah, it'll, it'll be, be a blessing. It'll be a lot of time. fun. Hey, hey, but we admire you guys with your family yes, unit indeed. as well. I think that's very commendable because we're all about family. You know, <laughs> hey, I'm Italian, you know. But, <laughs> but I think that's great. You guys, uh, you guys travel with your kids. You get them involved in the act, which is exactly what I did years ago. You know, now our kids are 31 and. 28. 28. So they have their own lives. And yeah. So they will not come on, on a show with me ever, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see if Roman will, our grandson. Yeah. He may love magic. Yeah, yeah. You well, that's know. the thing, man. And it's a blink of an eye. And, mm -hmm. you know, you only have them for 18 years. My little girl's already 11. Well, all those wow. shows she's been there, she'll wow. be gone soon. It'll be a blink of an eye and she'll be gone. And then it'll just be the boys. And they'll yeah. be gone. And it's back yeah. to us. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be yeah, that's. That's pretty much us. It's just <laughs> yeah. Us. <laughs> We've been married. It'll be thirty-two years in, in May. In yeah. May coming up of the next year. So yeah. It's been uh, uh, it's been it's been quite a while. Yeah. yeah everything everything's wow. been, Good been times. going great. Yeah. Uh, the thing I did want to mention too is uh, I I did move my magic. Maybe I could send you some pictures, and what you could do is post them. I, I moved about ninety-eight percent of my magic into a climate-controlled storage facility. So she she's happy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> she got her house back. Pretty much. So, now uh, we got grandbabies. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I have it all lined up with shelves. You know what? It's all on display. Really the majority nice, of it. Yeah. It looks like a gigantic magic shop. You know, <laughs> so it's pretty cool because I've been I've been collecting magic as well as performing. I've been uh, collecting for about forty years. So I've amassed uh, quite a bit of Plus uh, building and magic. building and building yeah, magic. That's of, right. So yeah. it's been crazy. Building crops. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, I love it. We we had the same problem uh, at our old house. I had <laughs> magic. I had magic in every room of the house. She had to, she had to slide next to illusions to even get in and out of the washroom. <laughs> the washroom uh, Natalie. Well, that <laughs> brings back, that brings back memories. I had, we had crates in our kitchen of magic. <laughs> It was, yeah, and in our bedroom, we had crates. I mean, I think the only places we didn't uh, was our daughter's room. Yeah. So we had huh. some room, didn't we? Yeah, I'm sure. sure. I'm sure. And <laughs> our living room in our old house was our rehearsal area, so there was yeah. always tables and backdrops set up in there. That's also, cool. uh, you know, those crates didn't move. They were stuff that I bought in collections that I knew I'd get to eventually, but we never opened those crates, so they literally sat there year after year. They didn't move. So, wow, I understand. I understand. Yeah, Luckily, definitely. we have five acres here. I have work sheds out back. I have a gym out back. I have a two car garage. I have all my storage in. So, and my magic room here. Well, so, uh, yeah, I can see that. That looks really cool. that looks pretty cool. You know, things are getting bad, Wes. When you when my wife came home one time, she's watching TV. And she goes, what's that? There was a big head chopper behind her. She goes, this is getting out in of the living room. In the I living said, room. Oh, no, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not taking the living room. <laughs> yeah, it, it was getting out of hand. It was really getting out of hand. So I'm glad hey, I made them. It's not drinking or drugs, though, Sherry. I mean, yeah. how bad? Oh, I know. 
<laughs> it's, it's fun, I know. It yeah. is. We're like little kids, man. And, and the know. next thing, you just think when you see a trick, you know, when I was a kid, it was going to be the next trip trick was going to put me over the top and I was going right. to be Copperfield. <laughs> now it is every trick I bought, I was going to become Copperfield if I just saved up for the bucks about this. But yeah, nowadays, good. I think about the smiles I could put on people's faces or wow. putting that routine together. You know, all this magic I'll never use ever. But I can't quit buying because I just think of those smiles. I just, I love it. I love it. Exactly. See, that's, that's, you know, that's the thing about it. The older you get, you know, you think differently. And it's like, you know, I just want to make people happy. That's right. And And uh, you do, honey. Yeah. And I keep my traveling down. I mean, you guys travel quite a bit. I I can see that on Facebook. It's amazing. I keep my shows within about a two, two and a half hour distance. That's about it. I don't feel like traveling too much anymore. And, but, you know, thank God I, I, I keep busy and I've been very busy all these years and, uh, but uh, yeah, but I did bring a few things here, Wes. This is how I got into magic. And I'm sure that the viewing audience, as well as you, can relate to this. This is the original that I read when I was, well, this is about 1974. So I was about 10 years old. <laughs> this is the Amateur Magician's Handbook. Ooh. Henry Hay. Uh, Henry Hay. And this is the copy that I got when I was a kid in 1974. You can see it's tattered. And I actually learned a lot from this book. That's and amazing. I still use certain routines from there. And I tell you what, this really is is almost the standby of magic. I've posted this somewhere else, and they said, "Yeah, that's the same book that got me into magic as well." And I still refer to it as you know uh, quite often. But this is the one that I grew up with. It's very tattered, so I have a few newer copies now. There is a couple things I wanted to show you guys as well as the viewing so, audience. So the first time I ever saw that book was probably 20, 2010 Was the first time I ever had my hands on that book. Okay. I up in college, but I never saw that book. They didn't have it. They didn't um, have it. I was at a show, and it was a millionaire show, and they had a library. And I was set up oh. with my back against the library wall, and I looked over, and I saw Magician's Handbook. I said, what's this? I yeah. thumbed through it before the show. I didn't want to start the show. That book oh. is awesome. It's got some great... I mean, I have a couple copies now, but yeah. that book is awesome. I was shocked oh, that that was in, like, Elena's home. I was like, what? Yeah. And I... I I find it funny that both of you said, I have a few copies now, not just yeah. one. No, not you're right. <laughs> His is like, I have to buy three at a time. One to, <laughs> one to have on a shelf and one just in case it gets broken. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. It's, I don't know. It's kind of nope. a sick. I, I, I guess it is. I don't too. know. But, but yeah, but there's, there's a move that I, that I read from this book uh, close to 50 years ago and I still use it in my, in my acts, both close up mm and stage and i'm going to show it to you okay no that's fine this is uh this is okay just a pack of cards and i'm going to show you okay it's just a pack of cards now it's called the clip i don't know if you know about this or not but you know what when i lecture i always show this move to people here we'll let sherry what i have is a chapeau all right. <laughs> There's my beautiful assistant. You Love can it. hold that. Okay. Now, when I'm on stage, guys, or even close up, I got so adept at this move, and I'm going to show it to you close up as well. You could basically cut the pack and you could fan it. Now, when you pass your hand over it, just watch the image. It's, it's a little difficult to see. That's the king of spades. You pass your hand, you have a fan that appears from nowhere. And that's with short sleeves. You could pass your hand again, it comes from the elbow. You drop it into the hat. Nice. You pass your hand. You blow on it. Then you do your <laughs> out the mouth. You could drop it into the top hat. At this point, guys, I have a card found that I hit a button and it flies out. But that move is what I use when I do close-up magic, mm -hmm. going from table to table, right, mm -hmm. Sherry? Yeah. And Sorry. I could do it right in front of people and they can't catch it because I got so adept with it. And I'm going to show... You guys and the viewing audience out there, because just in case you don't know the move or someone doesn't, work on it because it served me well. Uh, when I lecture, I always teach this move as well. And the, the only place I found it was the Amateur Magician's Handbook. I'm going to show you guys. It's just a regular pack of cards. Now, I spring them in reverse because my hands do not bend quite as well as they used to years ago, and I'll explain it. So I spring it with its face, faces mm -hmm. facing up. When you cut the pack, guys... All I'm doing is I'm passing my hand over for literally a tenth of a second, and I stole about a quarter of the cards. What I'm doing from the back view, if you can see this, 
is my forefinger is getting a pull down just like that. And when I pass my hand in front of it, I push it into the crux of my thumb and I stole it. So that's how quick that happens. And yet the front never changes. Then you make your production. Okay. And I drop them into the top head. The reason why, like I said, I, I flex them in the opposite direction. It puts a bend like a crescent. If you can see that. That way, when I steal the cards and do my one-handed fan, I pinch it and my thumb goes inside. Now, my thumb doesn't bend quite as well as it used to, so I have to have that curve to make it look, uh, to actually aid in the production. So that's called the clip. And I've been I've been using that for many, many years. And yeah, learned... it's beautiful. Yes. Beautiful. It looks great, man. And, Thank you know, you. your thumb doesn't work like it used to. You made an adjustment. No one would ever know. And that adjustment makes sense. I mean, People wouldn't think yeah, twice about yeah. it. I love it. It looks great, man. Thank you. I actually panicked because it started about a year ago. I said, Sherry, I can't bend my thumb to yeah. produce these cards when they're flat. So I was playing around and I came up came up with that That's spring cool. in reverse. And you could do a, a color change too, guys. You could do the same thing. There's the 10 of hearts. There's the changes to the black two and it changes to the eight of hearts. So you're basically stealing, pushing on top, cutting, stealing off, coming around, depositing. And you're, and you're and you're basically uh, what you're creating is a form of a color change. Mm -hmm. So that can be used with the clip as well. Very useful. Nice. And uh, yeah, so I just wanted to share that with you guys. But I'm going to do some stuff here. And I'll give you some room. Uh, oh, okay. Thank you, Sherry. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> Sherry. I'll see you later, Sherry. Oh, I'll be back. <laughs> okay. As you guys know, I'm a magic collector as as well as an inventor of magic, and uh, I'm a I'm a full time performer as well. Like I said, it's been close to forty years. Now, I'm going to show you something. Uh, the main thing I collect is Inverti. And he was a Dutch magician slash inventor from Holland. Okay, I'm going to show you a couple of his effects. All right, we're going to set the mood right, guys, with a candle. Now, what I would normally do is have somebody select a playing card. And it is an ordinary pack, so it doesn't matter. I'm just going to drop one out. And I'm going to show it to the viewing audience. Uh, and if there was an audience around me, I'd just scan the whole audience as well. I place it into the pack, and I'm going to introduce somebody, the great Skeletini, and he's right here. All right, and I could hold him up to show you. I hope you guys can see him okay. But let's yeah. set the mood. Let's set the mood right. Here's the candle. Will you light the candle, Skeletini? Oh, yes, he did. Now I'd like you to concentrate on the card, if you would, Skeletini. Will you help me find the playing card? I don't know if you've seen that, Wes. He said yes. We're going to go through, and I'd like you to look, look at the cards. He said he has it. Okay, I'm going to start low. Skeletini, was the card an ace? Was it a two, three, four, five, six? He says it was a six. Was it a black card? Was it a red card? He says it was a red card. Was it a heart? It was the six of hearts. Simply amazing. <laughs> that, ladies and gentlemen, is the Inverti Talking Skull. And this is the very first Inverti prop that I ever purchased. And he's really cool. And uh, Murphy's Magic is doing a fantastic job, which I'm sure you folks know out there. They are redesigning the Inverti line. One of them will be the Inverti Skull. I think they came out with Color Match just recently, which is, which is the Magic Markers. But what's cool about the skull, if you can see, is he's, his face, his head is suspended, I guess, about a half an inch from the base. Okay. And you could pass, you know, a piece of paper. You know, there, there's, there's nothing connected to the actual skull itself. And yet, when you want to, you could make him clack his jaw. Go ahead and clack it. Okay. And so what's, what's, what's happening here, folks, is that there's an electromagnet inside the base. And in the in the lower part of his jaw is a is a magnet. So when I pulse the transmitter, uh, throughout the years I've used toe switches and so forth. When the when the coil gets pulsed, it'll pull the jaw down, and there's a spring. It'll pop back up once you once you let go of the transmitter. So that's the inverted skull, and we could blow out the candle. <laughs> now this is great for close up. I've used this many many times, and I'll show you a few more things here too. And I have skulls in all different sizes. This is a little bit larger one here. And I use this on platform or small stage. Uh, would you say hello to Wes? 
and Natalie. Oh, look at that. He's clacking his jaw. Okay. And uh, so he helps me with card selections, card divinations, and so forth. He is not Anverti, though. But just to give you a, an idea of the different sizes. And I also have life size ones as well. Now I'm going to show you guys something that's really cool. This is the Anverti original mental die. And I'm going to hold this as close as I can. And I'm going to show you what's going on here. What you basically have is about a two and a half inch square plexiglass die and a box that can be shown completely empty. What you do is you have a spectator place the die in and remember the, the digit that's facing upward. And you place it into the box or they place it in. And I could tell that that's a two right away. Now, what's happening here, guys? Here's the original receiver on this thing. There's LEDs that match. Like right now, it's on the two. All right. Now, we'll try a different number here. We'll go with number five. And what year did this come out? 1974, I'd say. 74, wow. maybe 75. And the original electronics are still in here, guys. It's kind of hard to get it right in the front, but that's number five. So whatever, whatever... A uh, digit is facing up, it will correspond to the matching re receiver. Now, six turns it off. Okay, now, I don't uh, perform with this anymore because things have advanced. This only picks up about 10 feet away. Now, with the key fobs and the encoded uh, type of electronics, they can pick up 100 feet away, maybe 150 feet. This is within a 10 to 12 range distance. But back when I did use it, if a spectator puts the six face up, you will not get a reading. Okay, so you have a couple of options. They either placed it with a six up or they didn't place it in at all. <laughs> and things like that, you know, have happened. But anyway, is, let is, me show you. Is there a weight yes. to that die? Is there a weight to the die? Does the die have some meat to it? Yes. And I'm going to show so you how. It it it. If it's a six, they can put it in your hand and you can immediately tell them, well, it's, it's on number six or it's empty, well, right? Well, the die goes into the box, okay, because what's happening here, Wes, and I'm going to show you. No, I'm saying if they put it on six mm -hmm. and you don't get a readout, you'll know immediately when they put it in your hand whether they put it back in the box if they stole it out or it's on six, just by the weight. Yeah, yeah, right. You, you know what, but it's it's actually better not to hold this thing because you know what? Well, you don't on hold... six, yeah. yeah what, on, is your on out? Six. what is your out then if it's on six? Yeah, yeah, that you know that would be a tough one. I mean, there has been certain instances where people didn't put it in there. You, you know what I mean? And I just said, you know what, the spirits don't seem to be with me today, or what? Yeah, I don't know. To be honest with you, yeah, you need some kind of an out. I understand what you're saying, but uh, let me show you the way this thing works. The one spot is the key, and I'm trying to hold this dead center. Okay, you're gonna basically it's a screw. All right, and this is going to freak you guys out. I'm telling you how this, what a genius Anverti was. All right, so basically that's a screw head, and the die is integrated into the actual screw itself. All right, so this will pop off just like this. And now you can see the internal part, and you can look at the battery in there as well as the components in this thing. And these are all hand-wound type of things. This is prior to the digital age. I'll go a little closer. All right, so this goes in here. Now I'm gonna show you the receiver. This is this is really amazing. Where do you see this? You won't this scares it. me so much looking at it because I just see me not be able to put everything back together. <laughs> <laughs> see, that's the thing, because if you own these things, you have to know how to maintain them as well. Look at this inside here. Wow. Looks like a brick box. Yeah, this is all hand-wound coils, okay? And these are the potentiometers. There, there's there's different pots in there. Because this goes out of tune a lot. And it's one point size, uh, 1.5 size N batteries that go in there. There's two of them. Okay, now these terminals have to be sanded constantly because it gets kind of, I mean, this thing is almost 50 years old. Frankly, I'm surprised it still works. But so what happens here is when the switch is turned on and there's a magnet that's in the bottom of the die box. Okay, so each side of this box 
has a read switch on, on the opposite on the opposite uh, number. But the one that goes to six, there is no read switch. So that's why it will be blank. Uh, would I trust this thing in the natural performance? No. Uh, like I said, the distance isn't very good. But back in 1975, 76, or somewhere in the mid-70s, this, this, this was far advanced. I mean, there was talk way back in the 60s that there's, that there's going to be some type of an electronic die. And there was a few other versions, but I think Anverdi's really took it to leaps and bounds. To but what is, what is that worth in the collector's market? Do you have any idea? Uh, I would say about 1500 bucks to itself or somewhere around there. But, so, but I'll just put this. So I know it's priceless to you, but is it better to sell it now before Murphy's comes out with that updated model? Is, <laughs> oh, I mean, well, they actually. Everybody will want the $300 model and not want to pay $1,500 for one. Yeah. <laughs> well, here, here's the way to look at it. Okay. Sherry, Even if, if you can. <laughs> <laughs> Even if somebody does come up with like a more modern version, it's still not original Inverti. Yes, you know I mean? true. Yeah, because yeah, you know what? He made it with beautiful plexiglass. I mean, that was his staple. He basically made things out of plexiglass, all different colors too. Now, out in Europe, they call it Perspex. So he made it with uh, Perspex, and his his trays with the you know with the liquid, the you know the uh, uh, drinking glasses where they fill up. He made them out of black plexiglass, orange, yellow, and so forth. But this is the Inverti. Original mental die, and if it does ever go completely haywire, these parts cannot be replaced. Uh, so you have to, I would have to physically yank everything out and just put all modern electronics to it. Okay, so that's the drawback because it's getting to the point now where most of his things are they're just going haywire and they just don't work anymore. But uh, yeah, he was uh, he was an amazing man. Uh, and he came up with a lot of things. He started off as a clown, believe it or not. If you read his story, uh, I didn't bring any of his books here today, but it, but he did write a couple of books. 50 Years of Magic Creation was the book he wrote in 1990, 92 or 93, just before he passed away. And it gives the schematics of of a lot of these electronic uh, pieces and so forth. But that's, that's the main book. And he covers all of his liquid effects too, which are fantastic. He made some very nice liquid effects. And uh, 1964, the year I was born, I believe, he came up with another book, uh, Magic with Liquids. Uh, and it was all about his trays, his milk pitchers, and so forth. But here's an effect back here, guys, you don't see too often. I, I actually ran out of room setting this stuff up, so you have to bear with me. This is the Inverti floating die. Okay, now, I, I still use this once in a while. It's a fantastic effect. Just to set the mood, I'm going to put a little bit of music on here. Now watch the die very closely. Watch. I'd like it to rise. Stop. Go back down. Come on back up. Stop. A little higher. A little higher. Stop. Up a wee little bit higher. All right. And what's cool about this is you can take it and you can actually dump it out and pass it for examination. That's what's cool about this. And uh, here's the box. Here's the box for it here. Now, I've had people actually examine this thing minutely, and it can be examined, like I said, and they will not find anything. I've had people ask me, do you have like an air pressure chamber with air pushing through here or what have you? This is vis of, this is probably visually the most amazing of the inverted pieces. If uh, I was to guess, I would say something with air pressure. It looked like air pressure. <laughs> No, it looks yeah. like it's getting sucked in a vacuum. It looks like it's getting sucked up. Yeah, that's the, yeah, that's the illusion it creates. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess that that, that would be the most common I uh, guess on there. But you know what? And uh, keep in mind too that I say go ahead and examine this, so there's no fans or blowers right. contained in it. It's a, it's an amazing piece. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, Murphy's is, is is going to do the floating die. I have I have no idea. I am good friends with one of the uh, developers, uh, Patrick Wolford. Very, very nice man. We keep in touch because he's obsessed with Verdi too. <laughs> and uh, he likes electronic magic in general. So when I build something and I get it on video, I always uh, I always send him down the uh, video. And so he gets a kick out of it. And uh, But he's a very nice man. This is a little chamber that I put together, which which will which uh this will this will lead into the next part i've uh, written a couple books and one came out about three weeks ago 
It's called Skull Magic Unleashed Figures. Look, <laughs> this covers my 40 year collection of different types of skulls, you know, ranging from all different companies, plus my own creations. And there's a DIY section in here. Oh, here's here's part of my collection inside the storage unit, guys. I'm glad this popped up. I forgot. This is this is all part of the storage unit, uh, different sections of it. Wow. It's all, it's all on display and so forth. And there's actually, there's a DIY section in here. And it also tells you um, uh, things from the past, you know, like Professor Hoffman's skull that, uh, that he describes. As, as well as uh, Hofzinser's watchwork skull, a balsam oak. I actually teamed up with the House of the Unusual, very good friend of mine, Eddie Gravera. So uh, if you go on Amazon.com and check uh, Skull Magic Unleashed, this is for sale right now. I believe the soft cover, which is this one, sells for about $21.95. And it also tells unusual facts about skulls. I mean, throughout the whole thing, it's loaded with facts about skulls there's another book that just came out yesterday it's called haunting is it what haunting oh here, thank oh, you yeah. sure <laughs> how to haunt with how to hunt with magic that's really detailed yeah this is this is a diy book really so look so if anybody would ever want to uh build something uh with you know with a, a spooky nature I explain how to build a uh, barking dog, which is very similar to the Inverti barking dog. I built a. a, a, a built a well? That's your book as well, or the House of Unusual put it out. Uh, both of us collaborated together. And that's and called How to Hunt. Yeah, for some reason I keep I keep touching the wrong buttons. We're going to give us another how shot. To how to hunt with magic. With magic. All right, yeah. perfect. So there's you know there's how to uh, how to build a miniature floating table. Well, you know what? I have several floating tables, and I always thought they were a little bit too big. So I built like a nightstand, and it's based off the old method, not the not the zombie type. I kind of like the old way, uh, sometimes even a little bit better. Uh, there, uh, there is a bunch of projects in there. This is in there, which is a which is a a sound module, and so I explain where to get it and how to hook it up to a stronger speaker. This has come in hand so many times I couldn't tell you that. You know what, you know, like if I wanted to cover some noise or something like that, then I record some weird clockwork music or what have you. And I just secretly push the button and, uh, you know, it'll actually help. It'll help during your, you know, during your performance and so forth. So, yeah, check those two books out. Visit houseoftheunusual.com, www.houseoftheunusual.com. We do a weekly podcast here, ain't I? And I do a weekly video, a little three or four minute video performing magic. It's called Chuck's Corner. Uh, but the podcasts are on Spotify, Apple, and so forth. Pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. Eddie's a great guy. I was very fortunate to actually meet him. And so, yeah, so we've been collaborating in a in a, quite a few things. You know, so it's what's like the name doing... of the podcast? Chuck's Corner. Chuck's Corner is the name of the podcast. Chuck's Corner is the magic. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, yeah. Chuck's Corner is is the magic segment. The actual podcast itself, it's just it's just House of the Unusual podcast. So okay. search, yeah, House of the Unusual podcast, and they're all archived. Or you could go to house of house of the unusual .com and you can find them as well. But uh, yeah, we you know and, and we talk about weird things. I mean, Sherry and I like to walk in cemeteries. Uh, I mean, there's there's like nothing. Story. Yeah, there's like nothing yeah. normal about us. <laughs> but uh, oh, but getting back to the Anverdi skull, guys. This is the this is a little box I built for this years ago, and I built it out of black plexiglass, paying homage to Anverdi, and I got clear plexiglass here. So if you get the little skull. And you can place them down inside. See? And you close it up. I put a hasp on here. You can put a little piece of metal through there. And it'll basically keep it safe when you transport it and so forth. But, yeah, you know what? For most of my things, I built a case for it to carry it around. Black plexiglass is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, there are some performers that do not care for it, but I always did. I always liked uh, plexiglass itself. It's a very, very nice material. Uh there's a there's one person that I did want to mention, okay. There's two people that I credit that actually got me into magic. I'm here in Pittsburgh and I've lived here all my life. The first person is Harry Albacker. I don't know if you ever heard of him. Uh, people have heard of him surprisingly, you know, like even even far off, uh, you know, like in different states and so forth. He was a, a he was a like a circus type of magician. He traveled to all the county fairs. 
from Pittsburgh all the way down to Florida, North and South Carolina, back up through Pittsburgh. And he got me into magic. He came to my grade school when I was a kid. And that's what got me the magic bug. And of course, in the late 60s, early 70s, I was watching Mark Wilson on TV. So that that certainly helped. But Harry really propelled me into that. So, so I got into magic and I went to college for business. And uh, it just it was so boring. I said, I don't think I want to do this. You know, so I kind of, you know, I kind of worked with magic. 1986 or 85, I put an ad in the local phone book out here, which is which is the Yellow Pages, and it started to pick up really well. At that time, as you know, you know what that was the gold standard. I mean, like if you were in the phone book, you went to like over a million people here in the tri-state area, maybe 1.5 million people, and uh, uh, you know. But of course, nowadays we're online. But uh, yeah, so he's the guy that really got me into it. Then in 1986 or 87, I had the good fortune to work with this gentleman. Which, if you are a magician, you know who I'm talking about, Del Rey. So I worked with him here in Pittsburgh on the same bill, and I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I mean, he had a table that moved across the stage. He had a teddy bear that drank liquid, uh, card rises. I said, what is going on? He was just unbelievable. So uh, we became friends, and we stayed friends until his passing, and we talked on the phone and so forth, and he sent me a few things. This is part of the, my collection, which is a cherished piece. He sent me an autographed picture, and I have and I have quite a few other pictures as well. And he sent me several motors that he uses and little figurines. If you're familiar with his close-up act, uh, Wes, he has he has these little figurines, like a little rabbit, and it stands on a clear drinking glass. It, you know, it would be turned over. It, that's, so the rabbit would stand on the on the flat part and he would command it to jump. It would stand on its head and so forth. So he would gimmick these things. So he sent me a whole bunch of those. One of these days, I'm going to put it all together into a nice curio. So it'll be like a display type of thing. Wow. But yeah, but Del Rey was the man. I mean, uh, he, you know what, whenever you mention the, the, you know, the name Del Rey, you know, uh, magicians are like, Whoa, yeah, <laughs> it's actually well. Everybody, funny. when I go to MAES, everybody talks about Del Rey and the history of Del Rey, but I never saw him. I don't think I've ever seen his act. Okay, um, on YouTube, I, mean, I don't even know. Yeah, if you go on YouTube, there are there are segments of his act. I should have brought his book. I actually have, I actually have the copy upstairs. There was a book that was published about Del Rey about ten years ago, I guess. You know, these years are going so fast; it's it's kind of hard to. But I, I believe it's about ten years, maybe eight years ago. Uh, several of his friends, which they've passed since then, but they wrote a book about him. It was called Del Rey, America's Foremost, I believe. And it comes with a, with a, with a, with a DVD. So it has his close-up act on there and his stage act. Uh, yeah. absolutely, absolutely phenomenal. I mean, and, uh, I actually, I actually, uh, replicated, uh, certain pieces from him. So if, if you look on YouTube, I have a, I have a Del Rey mini lecture. And, and so I, I have a little mouse that walks across the table and he'll stop at the selected playing cards, you know, of, it's, it's, it's very similar to what Dell used. And, and so I have a drinking, uh, uh, a gorilla, you know, and so he's on there, uh, but Dell used the bear, of course. So if you search YouTube and search, search magician, Chuck Caputo's Del Rey lecture, you can check that out. It's only about five or six minutes long. I don't make long videos. I don't, I don't like to make 30, 40, 50 minute videos, but, uh, yeah, so check that out. But Del Rey really got me into the electronic magic. Then about two or three years later, somebody mentioned Inverti. And this is pre uh, the internet. So, you know, at this time I said, who and and what and what? So I, so I wrote it down. I started calling different magic shops. And they said, oh, yeah, yeah, I have a couple of his pieces here. And that's how I bought the Talking Skull. And I said, wow, this is really cool. So I got the barking dog, and it just led into different pieces throughout the years. And uh, you know, so uh, by the grace of God, after all these years, I got the largest. I have the largest Inverti collection in the world. So that's why uh, Murphy's Magic contacted me when they were redesigning the uh, the Inverti line. But uh, yeah, so two great, two great people, Del Rey and Tony Inverti. Wow, that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> so. Um, what about your inventions, the stuff that you invent? Have you sold anything? Yeah, I've sold quite a few oh. pieces. Yeah, you know what? There's a few things I'm holding on to. You know what? I'm a big fan of Robert Houdin, the, you know, the French magician. Uh, he's, he's credited as being the father of modern magic. 
I uh, replicated two of his pieces since the last time we talked, I believe. I built them, I guess, about a year or two ago. One is Antonio Diavolo. He's the uh, trapeze artist. Uh, that would definitely be the most complex piece that I ever built. And uh, I actually shrunk him down. Uh, the original uh, version was about 37 inches tall. I got him down to 17 inches. And it's all electronic, Wes. And it's on YouTube. So if you check uh, Chuck Caputo's Antonio Diavolo trapeze artist, you will see him doing his stuff. Wow. Actually, actually put him on a trapeze. He goes back and forth. He comes up. He sits on it and so forth. And I devised a way where he vanishes at the end. So I cover him up with a big cloth. A puff of fire comes out. And I whisk it away. And he's gone. Just the trapeze is there. So, uh, yeah, that's that's pretty cool. And that I'm holding on to. I, I probably will when never. Magic so. lessons. I tell them about uh, Jean Eugene Robert Houdin, and I go and show them some different things. And there used to be a Baker video on YouTube. I can't find it anymore. But that's my favorite. I love the show. Yeah. I love yeah. the Baker. You know what? And that's. Baker, that's, that's one, and I can't wait to see it because, dag on it. Yeah. Yeah, that's the second thing I built. So if you if you search yeah, if you search uh, YouTube, I I built the pastry chef wow. that I that I sold. You know, and it's and it's 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 really cute. What I did was I I I patterned it off of the original, but it's a little bit smaller, and it's a tabletop little French bakery more or less, and it is really cute. <laughs> and like the little chef comes out, you know, and the doors open up, and so he's holding a little tray. And uh, Sherry uh, videotaped this for me, so it's it's like really cool. And so from a little chart, I had Sherry pick a pastry, and I and I wrote it down. I put the piece of paper on the tray. He takes it back inside, and the little doors close up. A light comes on, and through the side window, you could see him with a rolling pin, and he's and he's rolling out the dough and so forth. And then the light goes out, and he comes back out holding what she selected. In this case, I believe it was a, a croissant. Uh, but the mechanics involved with this now, I'm just going, I'm just, you know, you know, going by what I think it is. So I just had to re-engineer the whole thing. So I have a lot of moving parts. If you watch the video, like you could hear servos and relays clicking on and off, but <laughs> well, that's even something I can show my kids though, because I can't yeah. find the original pastry chef, the original baker anymore. So that'd be awesome to show them, you know, where it's come. I just yeah. love that little piece. Yeah, you know, I try to explain it to the kids. What is it? It's a, it's a vending machine. But think yeah. about it. <laughs> I like that. I like but that. It's a vending but machine. But you're trying to dumb it down for, you know, five-year-olds sometimes, you know. I have kids from five to 15, and you oh, try to explain right. to what it is. But, you know, yeah, it's yeah. kind of like a vending machine. You're getting what you ask for, kind of. Yeah. yeah, you know yeah. yeah, you know what? That's that's a very good way to put it, uh, Wes. You know what? Uh up until about five or six months ago, around here anyway, we had red boxes where you would actually, you know, you know, uh, put your put your card in and you'd select a particular uh, videotape that you'd like to rent. And so, you know, it would go through the motions and grab whatever video and vend it to you. If you think about that, that's an electronic any card called for because of the fact that, you know what, it would go through, I don't know, maybe like 100 different videos and it would it would manually extract whatever video you want and drop it into the conveyor and would come out to the slot. So that technology can be used for such a thing as any card called for. And I've, and I've done things like that. Uh, you know, things that grab different discs from, you know, like there was a rotating uh, a, a CD or a DVD uh, type of, type of a, a dispenser that I bought. It was all remote activated and it would hold like a hundred DVDs. It would spin around to the exact location. This had to be, what do you think, Sherry, about 15 years ago? So, so I put that, I, I basically took the I took the machine and shrunk it down. I, I took the casing off it, built it into a tabletop. And so there was a there was a duplicate pack of playing cards in there standing up. So whatever one somebody would mention, I'd have the code and Sherry would hit it. It would slowly rotate to the proper place where you actually needed it. You know what I mean? So then I'd have a little duck, you know, that had a little magnet or whatever piece of wax or magician that would reach down and into a little into a little holder and it would pull up the card that they selected. So that but, technology, keep that in mind. I think you hit upon something right there. Uh, watch out for the Halloween toys, which is what I always do, the Christmas toys, the little animated figures. They can be used as well. So you can actually make a trick out of it, which I have many, many times. But yeah, but uh, I guess the question you asked, have I sold? Yes, I've sold, I guess, about... 80% of the things I've built throughout the years. Uh, years ago, flea circuses were big. 
I don't know what was going on in West, but I couldn't build these fast enough. I sold over about 150 flea circuses. Some were okay. some were like a manual type of thing with strings. Others were a radio control with a key fob. I've sold them to, I don't know, maybe 40 different countries all over the place. And uh, I, I couldn't keep them in stock. I built them for about three years straight. And it was crazy. I mean, I would, I would after a show, I would, I would go down my little workshop like a little cobbler, and I'd be cutting things out. <laughs> was this about 11, 12 years ago? Pardon me? Was this about 11 or 12 years ago? Yeah, even even a little longer than that. It spanned about a good three or four years. But, yeah, it was. It, I think it ended maybe about 11 or 12 years ago. But everybody okay. wanted a flea circus. Everybody. It was crazy. My friend Dennis Phillips, he lives in Florida now. He was making a flea circus and did this whole – it was amazing. It was it was awesome. It was it had all the bells and whistles. But man, he worked he worked about eight months on that thing. And, yeah, but well, he had yeah. to have one, and everybody was asking for one. And he was yeah. It's you never crazy. saw it. You never saw it. Yeah, I never saw it. <laughs> the That's... diving board did that. Shot up. He had little thin air compressor. Shot water up with the flea. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know what? It's it's a, it's a very funny routine. I mean, you could you know the, you could let your mind go wit go wild. I mean, I actually built ones for Halloween where like it was a it was it was a creepy facade. You know what I mean? Like once once the flea would climb up the steps, like you said, jump off the diving board, he would jump into like a little bucket of slime. You know, so yeah, there was you know there was creepy things involved with. It. So you could let your imagination run wild with you, but it is very humorous. I mean, and, and the audiences really get a kick out of it. And I couldn't tell you the you know what there was there was quite a few people that would ask me, uh, are those real fleas? They just couldn't get over it. That, that you know that that, uh, that it was pretend. It's, you know, young kids, particularly, it was it was funny. It really was. <laughs> well, I just saw a post today, and I know two magicians that also have like inflatables in their business. So, if they don't have a birthday party, that are they'll go set up an inflatable for a birthday party, and then go do a show down the road. Mm-hmm. So, I can definitely see if you know you get hired for a county fair. Yeah, I could do a flea circus in between acts because hey, you just. Okay. You just it's a hey, there's Sherry. <laughs> look at look at look at magically appear. <laughs> You're going through the routine and following yeah. the script. Yeah, and it could be a filler. It could be, I'll do a show, but every half hour we can do the flea circus. Yeah, that oh, absolutely. Fun. Yeah, you know, like you said, Wes, that would be a good time filler. You know, particularly if you call a few children up as volunteers. Mm-hmm. You know, the old gag where you got the paper lunch bag and you snap your fingers where you're holding it. I mean, that gives the illusion. You know, you pick the flea up, you throw it in the air. And it goes into the paper bag. You snap your fingers with a thud. You know what I mean. And then uh, so what you could do is hand the kid a, a big magnifying glass and say, "Can you see it?" You know, <laughs> you know things of that nature. I mean, it's it's yeah. a good it's a good lead in. You know, it's a good time filler during a magic show, like you nice. said. But yeah, there was a big big demand for flea circuses. What did you? So, have to say? It was crazy. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. So when you were, you were selling stuff besides the flea circuses, were you making? Uh, you didn't make a whole bunch of pastry pastry chefs. Did you have anything you no. sent to market or you designed? I made I made oh. one pastry chef, and this guy I know wanted it really bad, oh. and so I, I I was kind of reluctant to sell it, but he did buy it, and he wants your Antonio. He <laughs> wants the Antonio Diablo <laughs> too, but I I think you're going to have to pull that out of my <laughs> cold dead fingers. <laughs> I, I, I I don't think I'm going to sell it. Yeah, yeah. It's it's well, just. Well, let's talk off the air. I think I might know who it is. Hey, um. So now that we got Sherry back, I need to know about your uh, ghost adventures and the creepy stuff because we just got out of Halloween, and Ooh, that's yeah. we did a lot of uh, ghost talking episodes, just being silly. Uh, have you guys seen? Have you guys seen the Tesla videos on YouTube where people turn on their Tesla cameras in the cemetery and it says that there's somebody in front of them and there's oh, nobody? Yeah. Else? Did you see that? Yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah, okay. that's yeah, that's pretty wild stuff. <laughs> and uh, the ghost boxes were they. Where they supposedly hear them speaking and so forth, and uh, we do like to walk in cemeteries. We always we did. do, yeah. And you know what? Just it is for exercise. It's, too. it's it's good exercise. Yeah, it's quiet. <laughs> people are dying. <laughs> people are dying hey, to get in there. <laughs> <laughs> but we also do videos in cemeteries with famous people around Pittsburgh. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we did um, the Riddler, which is what's his name, Frank. Frank Gorshin. Frank Gorshin. Yeah. Yeah, we did that video, and then um, Chili Billy uh, for. Um, 
Yeah, this is more like a Pittsburgh thing. If yeah, you grew up in, they, the, in, the, yeah. in the 60s, 70s, well, maybe. Chiller Theater, wasn't that nationwide? Uh, Chiller no? Theater, I think, was in the tri-state area. Oh, this, okay. This was, a, this was a program that came on after the news, uh, the late broadcast, about 1130. And this guy named Chili Billy, his name was uh, Bill Cordill. A nice, very nice guy. He was a Pittsburgh staple. And he would host a little thing with, you know, with a couple movies, you know, pretty spooky stuff. And so we actually went to where he's... Uh, resting and uh, we did a little thing there uh tampa ring 13 here in pittsburgh the yeah. ibm is named after uh, tampa which is uh roy uh, sugden and uh, we went to his grave. yeah i think he might have been the first one he was the first one we did yeah and they always do a little bit of magic at their at their graves also and then the other um fred rogers oh fred rogers yeah from oh i loved him yeah yeah mr He's rogers Mr. neighborhood mm -hmm. yeah yeah there's more people guys from pittsburgh it would surprise you if you if you search famous people from Pittsburgh on a major or a minor level. There's more people than you think. Uh, so we'd like to visit Andy Warhol's uh, gravesite sometime. He's not too far from us, you know. Andy Warhol, yeah. yes. And mm -hmm. so it, you know what? There's uh, quite a few people. It, it'll keep us busy for a while. <laughs> yeah, between the Chuck's corners <laughs> and the magic shows. And yeah, so it'd be cool. It's awesome. But yeah, so we have a lot of fun and we do a lot of things together. You know. And, we took up golf a couple years ago, so we try to. We didn't really get too much into that this year. No, we but, couldn't. We yeah. were always so busy. Yeah. You know? yeah, and the weather. The weather, yeah. yeah. Pittsburgh weather. If you don't rainy. know, it's a lot is raining right now. I mean, we have constant <laughs> rain well, here. A lot, yeah. <laughs> but, wow, uh, wow. So uh, you guys don't try to uh, ghost stories and all that stuff out there? Or are you just actually just sightseeing and taking things in when you're, when you're going to all the cemetery stuff? Yeah, the only ghost kind of thing, the ghost tour that we did was down at Key West. Oh, Key West about a year that or two ago. That was really cool. Really yeah. neat. They did a really good job on a trolley type of bus type thing. They took us out and yeah, yeah, because there's some creepy things down there. Yeah. Go ahead and tell them. Yeah, Key West, I don't know <laughs> if you know it or not, but you might want to check this out. There's a haunted doll. It's, uh, he's supposed to be haunted. He's called Robert the Doll. And we he, did a video on him as well. It's yes, on YouTube. Yeah, so you know what? Go to YouTube. Search, yeah, there's a lot search of Sherry Caputo. It's all under her. It's C H E R I. So yeah. you'll see these videos and the current magic videos that we filmed from up to about two or three years ago until present. Mm -hmm. But there was a doll called Robert the Doll. He was owned by Robert Eugene Otto in Key West. A uh, very prominent family, and so uh, people would swear. Isn't Robert? Yeah, exa exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, okay. people would people would swear that this thing would poke out of the window, look around, run around, and so forth. So he's in the East Fort Metello Museum, or right side. near the airport. It's close to the little airport down there. And I do mean little, <laughs> <laughs> little airport. Yeah, <laughs> one, I, one terminal. Oh my goodness! I mean, like the running, stri uh, the run you have strip. To walk was, out to go up into the plane. Yeah, it's when I seen cool where we're going to land, I was worried. I said, <laughs> "Uh oh." But uh, yeah, but if you check out uh, Robert the Doll, he's on display at this uh, museum. And so mm -hmm. we did a little video of him. He's on there as well. And then the, the ghost story they were telling us about Von Kossel. Is oh, that how say his yeah. Name? Carl Von Kossel, also known uh, as Carl Tanzler. Tell him about that story. He was like a physician's assistant back in the 30s. And he fell in love with a Cuban-American woman down there. And TB was rampant at that time. So he was treating her for uh, tuberculosis. And uh, despite his valiant efforts, she still passed away. Mm. Lo and behold, he stole her body and he kept it for seven years. And so he went on trial. But surprisingly, uh, the judge was very sympathetic. It was, it, it, it was, it was known as a love story. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's done her also. Carl von Kossel, that's also known crazy. as Carl Kanzler. Creepy, <laughs> creepy. Yeah. Oh. But it was beautiful black plexiglass case that he put her in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, built by Inverti. <laughs> That's true. I mean, it was a love not, story. Yeah, <laughs> we do like unusual things too. Like um, we went to Coral Castle a year before mm. that down in Florida. It's in Homestead, Florida. I don't know if you've heard about it. Have you heard about Coral I Castle? So. I haven't. Oh. Oh, oh, tell him about this, it. This is so amazing, guys. He's it, turned me on to it because I never heard of it. And when I saw it, it was just amazing. But I've been I've been wanting to go to Coral Castle since 1980. So that's how long I wanted to go. Back when I was a teenager, I used to watch In Search Of, hosted <laughs> by Leonard Nimoy. 
And uh, you know what? Uh, you guys are quite a bit younger than me. You're probably wondering what Leonard who, but he was he was Spock from <laughs> oh, the original Star Trek. Yeah. Star Trek. Yeah, you know. Huh? But he hosted a weekly series called In Search of. It was unusual yeah, things, unexplained cool. phenomenon. One of them was Coral Castle. This is in West Homestead, Florida, I believe. And it was it's a it's a castle that's built out of coral that this little Latvian immigrant, he was about 98 pounds soaking wet. He dug this all up. I'm talking 20, 30 ton slabs and he built a castle. Uh, the front door is 20 tons. You can push it with your finger and it opens up. It's perfectly balanced. It's not a I castle have, for Wait, we've seen that. I have? Yeah, because no one knows how he built it. They, Nobody how, Exactly. How could Nobody he have done knows. it? Yeah, and, and a 20 ton door you can push with a finger yeah exactly. they said younger kids i saw something it might have been that william shatner unsolved unexplained thing oh. that yeah. he does now okay but yeah. they said the neighbor kids try to climb the wall and he shoot them exactly. away no <laughs> yeah oh, that one yeah oh okay you, you if you have a chance uh you know you two should really check that out but if you're anywhere near miami it's about an hour west. Uh, south. It's about south. an hour south of Miami. She she wanted to go to Miami a few years back in the worst way. Well, we I said, went to Coconut Grove. That was really nice. Yeah. yeah. So I told her, Sherry, I don't think we're far from. We went to Fountain Blue for. We went to Fountain for Blue for a spa day. You yeah. gotta love that, Natalie. Right. <laughs> oh my god, I would love it. <laughs> Wonderful. So yeah. so I told her check up check up Coral Castle, see how far it is. So she's a great detective. She yeah. oh my goodness. So she punched her little fingers and she had it. It's an hour away from Miami. Got to rent a car, went over there. It was cool. But you have to check this But it's place not a out. castle per se. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no roof. Like, it's mm -hmm. open. You walk in, and then there's these different, like a sundial that he made, um, all out of, I guess, coral, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of some sort. Yeah. And each one has a function. And it's um, also um, by the moon and the sun. And it, it's just, oh, and then, oh, this little guy, what's his name? Edward Leedskannon. Yeah, he was just a little guy. And they have a picture, uh, a cutout of him. He's about five, five, five foot tall. Yeah. <laughs> he healed himself of TB. Yeah. He wrapped what kind of coil? Electromagnets or something? Yeah, he uh, would juice him. He, was ju he would juice himself with electromagnetic uh, currents. And the sun. And it was just, it it's a, br a brilliant was a guy. Lot of, it, wow. it was, the tour was really interesting yeah. on each piece of as you go around yeah. where he ate, where he took a bath. It was just yeah. amazing. Imagine the magic tricks he could have built, huh? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> he was electrifying. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> when did we go to Palm Springs to that unique house? I just remember yeah. his uh, his security system in Palm Springs. Where he had a sunken living room floor and he had like a hundred mm -hmm. rattlesnakes. So every Ew. day he would throw rattlesnakes into his living room. And then he'd leave. No one would break into his house. But when he got <laughs> home, he had to hook each. He had to find all hundred snakes and put them away mm. before he could roam in his house. But that wow. was like some, uh, he was like yeah, an I artist as well. Yeah, I can't remember what it was called. That was what back was in two thousand eight. We're not as good at these memory uh, experts as you guys are. You can <laughs> laugh on everybody's name and everything. But that was in Palm Springs. That was Palm that Springs. Was, I was like, imagine coming home. It's Palm mm. Springs. One hundred and twenty outside. You came home at the grocery store. But you got to rattle up the snakes, wrangle yeah. up the snakes, cover stuff off. I'm yeah. not a, you know what? I'm not a big snake fan. Maybe I'd get a couple of pit bulls and a piece of raw meat or, or something. <laughs> that's, more like, that's more like it. Yeah, it was a shock factor for sure. But that I mean, is, yeah. he dunked in Florida, man. I mean, it was it was crazy. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Florida is such an awesome state. They have a lot down there. It's beautiful, and uh, you know what? We we enjoy going there and and. Uh, to visit. To visit. Yeah. It's a little too hot in the, it's, it's very summer, humid, in the but summer, yeah, yeah. in the summer, but it's yeah. a beautiful place to visit. Uh, I'm going in January to the uh, Dominican Republic with my son. Yeah. So that'll be yeah. interesting. Yeah. So, you know. Uh, my son's a salesman. He's doing really well. So he, um, they got this all expense paid trip for the guys that, and women <laughs> that did uh, abundance of um, sales for this year. So he gets to bring someone. Now, I got to say, he took me to Bedford Springs for the spa weekend. That was nice. <laughs> and I enjoyed that. But I kept telling Chuck, I got my passport. If he can't go, <laughs> I'm going to get it's in a resort, I guess. Yeah. So, so just, so just pray, pray for a safe trip. Oh, you'll be fine. <laughs>
Are you yeah. taking any magic with you? Not in Verdi stuff, but it, no, not the no, 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 in Verdi, right? Yeah, but I'm going to bring a pack of cards and a few yeah. things. One of the salesmen, my son Nick said, is uh, he, he likes uh, magic. Yeah, yeah, he's into magic, so I'll, I'll bring a few basic uh, things. But you know what? I would never try and try and attempt to even get this stuff mm -mm. through uh, TSA. They'll they'll confiscate it immediately. Yeah. You know, that'd be uh, horrible. Yeah, you know what? Back when Murphy's contacted me a few years back, what they had wanted me to do was fly to California with with you know with my Inverti stuff. I said mm -hmm. I don't think I'd want to even try that. I said if you guys come out here to Pittsburgh, you know what? Rent a yeah. place, set up a little makeshift studio. I'll do it, and that's what they did. So I yeah. found a place and they booked it. They brought that's all of the equipment in. So I just brought a huge box of Inverti. I was struggling, <laughs> and I just put it all together. About and we, fifteen minutes away from our house. About fifteen minutes <laughs> yeah. away from our house. We that's shot for like maybe fourteen hours. So yeah, I come home. Are... I was tired. Oh, I said, oh, I don't feel good. <laughs> all this retail. Uh, wow! Wow! Yeah. wow. Yeah. All right, so we started out by saying you're still working your butt off. You still have two shows a day. You know, maybe skip a show every once in a while. Yeah. Um, yeah. What? What's? What's? Forty years of doing this. What's the hardest part? You have thumb issues. Is there any other issues? I'm getting <laughs> older. I'm getting older. I was talking. To Steve. <laughs> yeah, watch your thumbs. That's the, that's the worst part. Your, your hands start to go a little bit, and uh, well, you're nursing a um, a ripped bicep muscle right now yeah my right he my carries left. these oh you're left yeah it's your left one yeah um he just got an mri this morning yeah. it's <laughs> it's getting a little better he carries these really heavy trunks um which i think is uh and probably sure, the culprit yeah i'm sure you could relate to that was uh carrying all the apparatus that would be the worst part i think is carrying the stuff uh that's what I think, yeah dolly dolly yeah i do he does yeah when it's a first yeah he does yeah. when he can. But, you know, I mean, but it's cool shows. You still have to put it on the stage, and, yeah. you know, carry it out of your vehicle and so forth. And some places you can't use a dolly. Some like places, sometimes yeah. at the parks and they got those gravel. It's yeah. Just, yeah I get hard to do these company picnics that are like in the <laughs> middle of nowhere. Huh? Yeah. Mean, I'm out there on the ground. It's like uneven. The tables are crooked. Yeah. There was even a couple of cows behind me already. I said, <laughs> am I going to get... Uh, Am I going to get trampled here or what? <laughs> you know, but no. hey, on with the show. It's fun. Yeah. But overall, it's a lot of fun. Or good memories. Very good memories. Yeah. Both of the kids, you know, and everything. It's fantastic. Yeah. And I'll do it as long as I can. You know what I mean? Uh, overall, thank God I'm pretty, uh, you know, uh, you know, pretty, pretty healthy. healthy. Yeah. But, thank uh, God. Just a couple things here and there. But watch your thumbs. That's the first thing to go, your hand. <laughs> <laughs> so is it arthritis? Is it arthritis, you think, a little bit? Oh, it could be. Well, she would know. You know what? She's a retired registered nurse. Okay. I don't know if you guys know that. So it works out great because I'm a hypochondriac. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, You're so but silly. I, it, it, I guess it would be arthritis, right? I guess, yeah. It can yeah, be. Because it's... You've man, got it's, like inflammation in there. And, yeah. yeah. And I used to lift weights for years. I lifted a lot of weights for years and stuff. I think it took its toll on me when I was younger. Yeah. And uh, things just tightened up a little bit now. So I always recommend uh, Greg Irwin's books. Do you, I mean, DVD, VHS tapes. Do you have any of those? I have a few of them. Yeah, I have, I have a little bit of just about everything. Yeah. Finger yeah, fitness, they're... man. I, I can't recommend it to my older magician friends that have any kind of trouble with their hands at all. It's just great. It's it's good. I mean, we yeah. got to have them. You got to, you don't yeah. have to have them. I mean, Wayne Dobson's in a wheelchair with MS. Yeah, but still, he's doing a show, and God bless him because I that's love it. Right. Yeah. That's right. Oh, he's he's so creative, you know. See, that's the thing. I mean, things have changed so much since I got into magic, and people are coming up with newer ideas, different ideas. It's it's mind boggling, and I tried to keep my thumb on it, but you know what? Uh, one of these days, it's just gonna it's gonna be overwhelming. It's gonna bury me because they're coming up with so many different. Even the moves are. Are different they're improved <laughs> i mean things are really you know what i i kind of tend to stick with my routine she'll yeah, tell you old I, school. yeah yeah i guess i am from the old school yeah. in certain ways but i do like technology at the same time right but i feel comfortable with you know you know with certain routines that i've been using for 30 years 35 years and i'd have to come across something pretty amazing to uh, change at this point right yeah. Yeah. yeah i get it i get it i this is my life my livelihood everything and i can't keep up I, I know I can't keep up. I yeah. I do what I can. It's just, it's everywhere. It's Europe has this. And this magic shop it has exclusive yeah. on this. This magic shop has exclusive. You can't, you can't find it all. You can't see no. it all. 
No, yeah. you, you know what? Hey, I just want to be remembered for doing the best I could. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't cut corners, which I'm sure you do not as well. I, you yeah. know what? I always go full force. You know, I actually give uh, more than I should, to, you know, to the, uh, to the shows and so forth. You know, like I won't cut corners. Uh, there are some of the newer kids. I'm not getting on them, but they they call a little briefcase. That's their stage act. I mean, this, I can't do that. You know, I mean, I I uh, give them their money's worth, and uh, you know, I'm I want to do the show that I want to see, and I get it because I mean, you got a torn bicep, but yeah. Anyway, <laughs> dude, hey, we're running out of time. That was that was everything. I'm gonna <laughs> send everybody to House of Unusual. I'm gonna send everybody to your podcast. I'm gonna send everybody to buy your new books. I appreciate Aww, it. Thank you. Um, only thing left we have to say is uh, see, see you next week. Okay. okay. Hey, you guys are great. Happy thanks. Thanksgiving. Thanks for having us. Check us out online at wesisley.com and patreon.com forward slash Wes underscore Isley for behind the scene videos, blooper videos, never before seen footage, discounts on merchandise, magic trick tutorials, and more. That's Wes Isley, spelled W-E-S-I-S-E-L-I. -S -E